This is Diagram GPT, where you can input a prompt like an ERD for an e-commerce app, and it generates a diagram as you would expect. And this is pretty cool to watch. There's always that initial wow factor when you see an LLM generate something like this. But is a tool like this actually useful? This is part of eraser.io, which is documents and diagrams for engineering teams, where you can draw diagrams over here and then you can take markdown notes over here. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you've probably already seen me use this. So eraser reached out and asked me if I would review their new AI features and give my honest opinion. Now, usually I would just come in here and create a new diagram like an ERD or a flowchart, but now there's a new option to create these using AI. And it can create all these different diagrams from a prompt. So let's try this out. Let's go a serverless to-do list app and let's see what it generates. And it's still really cool to just watch this thing generating a diagram. So here's the final diagram. And actually I wanna point something else out that I just noticed. So I'm gonna try out one of their examples for this one, a data model for Twitter that looks good. So I'm going to click generate and you'll notice that it creates the tables first, all of the different ones there. And then it's actually going to populate and link these up in a second step after, which is pretty cool because I think that means that it's using the model multiple times to generate a more accurate result here so that it's not trying to do everything in one go. Maybe it'll first generate the tables, then it's making all these connections in a second pass and putting in extra properties. And at first glance, this looks pretty cool. These diagrams look nice. And that's been my initial impression with LLM tools. They have this initial wow factor that they just created this thing. But then you start to look closely and realize it's not exactly what you wanted it to create. So like the DM section in this ERD, this probably isn't how I would set up direct messages between two users. I would probably have a message entity and then have the content be in a separate table from that. I would also want a timestamp on these. And that's not a huge deal. I can ask AI to update this diagram for me, or I can go in and modify this myself. So I could add a created at timestamp here, but I'm just modifying the decisions that were initially made by the LLM. And I'm not really sure why it made any of these decisions or what its intent was. I'm not entirely sure if this is a good starting point to start editing from, because the LLM doesn't have any idea about the application that I'm building or where I'm gonna take this in the future. You can kind of see this in the other diagram here, it's not sure if it's a web app or a mobile app. It hasn't actually flushed out the Lambda functions for me here. So it just doesn't know how to take everything into account and make the best possible diagram for my individual use case. These diagrams might not be a good plan for what I'm actually trying to build, or at least for what I'm trying to communicate to others. And a big reason to create diagrams is so that I can better communicate my own decisions and intentions. But none of these decisions were made by me and these aren't my intentions. This is just all AI. And there might be times where this is useful, like if I wanna see a quick example before I create my own diagram, but for the most part, I just don't see a point in tools like this, or at least that's what I thought. But then I thought some more, and then I tweeted my thoughts. Don't use LLMs to do critical or creative thinking, use LLMs to do the mundane Meow. work. And this is something that I've been feeling for a while and I've already changed the way I use ChatGPT and Copilot that reflects this. And then I thought I would try and bring this philosophy back into DrawGPT because maybe I've just been using this wrong. So instead of getting the LLM to do any creative or critical thinking, what I should do is have this just generate a diagram for me. So if I was planning out a database, I might just write out the business rules in plain English to get started with. Like a user has an email and a password. A tweet has text contents and a timestamp. A user can create many tweets. And this is a very basic contrived example, but you can see here that I am actually doing the thinking. I'm doing all the creative work here. And then what I wanna do is generate an ERD from my business rules. Now drawing out the diagram by hand is kind of mundane. It's kind of a pain in the ass. So what if I can just get AI to generate the diagram based on all the decisions that I've already made? And this is a nice outcome. This is doing a good job of the mundane task that I don't wanna to have to do right now. 
And then yeah, I can still have it modify this with more prompts or I can come in here and modify this myself. And I like this version of LLM tools. And the more I think about it, the more use cases I have for a tool like this. Like if I was put onto a project where there was already an existing database, but I didn't have a good visualization of what was going on there, I could just paste in the SQL or the ORM code or whatever data models they have in there. Here's an example using a Prisma schema. And then I can generate that visualization based on the data based on the decisions that have already been made. And it does a really good job here. This is awesome. This is how I would use this tool. It would have been really time consuming to have to draw all of that out just so that I could visually see what's going on and so that I could collaborate with other people using a diagram. But having AI generate this for me has saved me a ton of time. And half the time I like to draw out all my ideas on pen and paper or on a whiteboard. And with this, I could just take a photo of that upload the image to this tool and have it generate a web-based version of this that I can easily share with others and collaborate with. So once I take the decision-making process out of the LLM, these tools start to make a whole lot of sense. And here's an example that really made me love this tool. I am the program head of the full stack web dev program at British Columbia Institute of Technology. And here is a list of all the courses that students have to take in the program. And obviously some of the earlier classes are gonna be prerequisites for the later classes in the term, but there's no easy way of getting that data. I can't tell what object-oriented programming is a prerequisite for without just going through all of these courses and clicking this drop-down menu. And I'm pretty sure this isn't even stored in a database somewhere. This information only seems to exist on this web page. So a few years back, I wrote a little script that would scrape this page and create a list of all the courses with the dependencies. Then I had to write another script that would generate this graph of dependencies dependencies for me, just so I could have a visual representation of all the courses, which can come in really handy if a student is failing a certain class and I need to know which classes they have to drop after that, or if I need to make a curriculum change to a course and I need to know all the other courses that are affected. And it took a good chunk of my day to get this working, mainly because I didn't want to use Python and all the good graphing libraries are in Python, but it was a real pain for something that really should have been simple. But now I could just take the URL of this course and I'll go to ChatGPT first and ask it to give me all the courses with course codes and prerequisites. So that will generate this full list of courses that I need that I can copy, go back into Eraser here and create a new AI generated diagram based on that list. And this is now gonna generate that flowchart for me that took so much time before and just in minutes, it's already making this. It's doing that two-step process. I think it's gonna list out all the courses and then start linking them up for me. Yeah, so there's the courses and now it's doing the linking. This is really cool to watch. No matter what the outcome is, this is always gonna be cool to watch. And there it is, that full diagram, that full flow chart, exactly what I needed. It didn't have to make any critical or creative decisions. It just had to decide how this flow chart would be put together. It has done it perfectly and that is just the best representation of how to use generative AI.